what to do, what to do, stop with the blockchain finance and value. And we, today we're just looking at some news. We need to try to do some daily news. I've been having a break from the channel because of some issues and things that I wanted to kind of bring to the channel. And I think um, these daily crypto updates are going to help. So at the moment, as we can see on coin market cap, the global market cap is 959.9 billion, a 4.19% decrease over the last day. So Bitcoin has now dropped under 20,000. Um, I'll pick some up. Um, we've got Ethereum at 1,000. Now, in my opinion, we have to look at it, guys. A lot of people will say, no, imagine if you could get it back at these prices. We're back down at these prices. Are people buying? Are they scared? I think a lot of people are scared. Me, myself, I'm running into the flames. I've, whatever money I've got that's extra that I'm not needing for the next 10 years, five to 10 years, you know, it's just waste money, play money, I throw in there. So we can see you've got Ethereum at 1,000, USDT Tether um, off its peg, <laughs> uh, unfortunately there. Same with USDC off its peg, BNB coin, um, also down 4.86% over the seven day. Binance USD up over the seven day, 0.18%. Um, XRP down 4.15%. I think that's going to be big in the future. You know, it's one of my biggest holdings, XRP. Um, Cardano down 5.9% over the seven day. Solana. I mean, I remember when this was trading at £250 a coin, and you're looking at now it's $32, 13% down over the seven day, constantly just getting issues, shutdowns, all sorts of stuff. It's just, it's, it's, it's crazy. And then we got the doggy coin up three point. I mean, how, why? I mean, Elon can just pump this and it goes up, but yeah, the SEC that look into that is crazy. It's crazy things that are going on at the moment. So this is um, why a lot of people are saying that the decrease is happening. So crypto hedge fund, three arrows capital plunges into liquidation as market crash takes its toil. So the more that the markets are going down, the more that people are getting shaken out, the more these companies are basically failing and in my opinion this is what these the companies that are failing now are the companies that were supposed to fail before the fed came in and gave all of that stimulus yeah that stimulus kept a lot of companies from going down and they should have gone down and now that stimulus is gone and all that market manipulation is gone we're going to start seeing who should have survived and who's not going to survive and when we've shook out the crap, in my opinion, is when we're going to start seeing regulation um, come in. So major cryptocurrency hedge fund, Three Arrows Capital, has fallen into liquidation. A person with knowledge of the matter told CNBC, marketing of one of the biggest casualties of the last so-called crypto winter. Tenio has been bought on board in the last few days to deal with the liquidation process. The person who requested anon anonymity because they were not authorized to discuss the matter publicly said. Sky News reported the liquidation story. So 3 Arrows Capital or 3AC also, 3AC as it is also known, did not respond to a request for comment when contacted by CNBC. Tenio is the very last stages of the liquidation process. The person said the restructuring firm is taking steps to realize the assets 3AC has, then it will set up a website in the next day or two with instructions for how creditors can get in touch to make any claims, the source said. 3AC co-founded by Zhu Xu and Cal Davis is one of the most prominent crypto hedge funds which focus on investments in digital assets like cryptocurrencies around and it's known for its highly leveraged bets. Zhu has extremely bullish views on Bitcoin. Now it's fair enough you have bullish views but when they're leveraged you know this goes against you and you, you, you're down in the dumps. So but a slump in the digital currency prices which has seen billions of dollars wiped off the market in recent weeks has hurt 3AC and exposed a liquidity crisis at the company. So on Monday, 3AC defaulted on a loan from Voyager Digital and made up of $350 million in the US dollar peg stablecoin USDC and 5,250 Bitcoin worth about $304.5 million at today's prices. 3AC is exposed to the collapse out Algorithmic stablecoin Terra USD and sister token Luna. 
The Financial Times reported this earlier this month that US-based crypto lender BlockFi and Genesis liquidated some of 3AC's positions, citing people f- familiar with the matter. 3AC had borrowed from BlockFi but was unable to meet the margin call. So a margin, well, we already know what a margin call situation is. So the unwinding of 3AC has sparked contagion fears to part of the market that could potentially be exposed to the company. Um, so other cryptocurrency companies have also faced liquidity issues. Lending firm Celsius, yeah, as we know about that one, and cryptocurrency CoinFlex were forced to pause withdrawals from customers, both citing extreme market conditions. Get your money off the exchanges, people. That is what I'm saying to you. Like <clears throat> you don't want to be, you don't want to get caught slipping on one of these exchanges. They're stopping you from taking your funds off. They're stopping you from doing anything with your funds. My funds, I buy them off the exchanges, obviously, but they're not kept on the exchanges. Um, so you know you can you can use a soft wallet if you want. You can use a nano ledger, whatever you whatever you feel is best. So other crypto currency companies have also faced crypto. Like, oh, we went through that. Sorry. Uh, so we drive customers extreme market conditions. Coinflex, however, had another issue with customers that failed to repay forty seven million debt, creating a liquidity problem for the company. So. You know, it doesn't seem like it was run very well to let one person take that much anyway when you're you're not that much of a big company. Um, So, yeah, I mean, here's another another article I was reading, and it's not the, again, the greatest of articles from Zai Crypto. So, zero bullish catalysts for Cardano, Solana, XRP, and Bitcoin. uh, As Bitcoin was crashing to 12,000. Now, in my opinion... That's a whole load of complete rubbish. You've got um, the XRP lawsuit that can come off of XRP with Cardano. You've got the um, hard fork coming up. So it's it, they make out like everything is just based on Bitcoin. We know that, you know, with the macroeconomic and microeconomic conditions going on at the moment with the war, that yes, Bitcoin is going to go down. But it is a more dominant coin in the market, but it doesn't mean that there isn't bullish catalysts on the horizon for other coins. Um, so we'll get into this. And to me, it just seems like it's just they're bringing out so much FUD at the moment to really try and just push the price down. So the crypto markets have been range bound for weeks, despite relatively attractive prices. Economic concerns remain. On Thursday, the markets again retreated, erasing gains made in the last few days. So Bitcoin, which reached below 20k, dragging major alts along. Despite showing some bullish pressure over the weekend, the crypto market slumped on Thursday. The market continues to move in a range in the face of economic concerns and regulatory uncertainty. The number one digital asset by market cap Bitcoin again slipped below the 20k price level, dropping by 6% and trading around the 19,186 price point. Ethereum, its closest competitor for dominance, is down by 8.45%. In the last 24 hours, trading around the £1,025 price point. Other major altcoins like Cardano, Solana, and XRP are trading over 10% lower with no clear bullish impulse on the horizon, which there is because we'll get into that in a second. So, notably, with some analysts believe that the bottom may be in for Bitcoin as it continues to trade within the tra- tight range formed in mid-May, and markets appear to be lacking a catalyst to sustain a push to the upside. On the other hand, veteran trader Peter Brandt believes the markets can go even lower. I do genuinely believe the markets can go lower. Um, Doesn't mean we can't see everything that's gone go back up, but you have to bear in mind, I think something that a lot of people are forgetting that throughout that whole crypto since 2020 bull run that we had, right, that was all manipulated. Make no doubt about it. That was when the Fed was pumping money into the market. So because the Fed were pumping money into the market, what did we end up getting? We ended up getting a huge run where the Fed was buying bonds and the Fed was giving out you know, um, loans to people and people were just buying stocks and buying crypto with it. And obviously the Fed was doing that as well. I think it was a, a couple of billion at least it was putting into the market per month. So imagine the, the, the difference that that had on keeping up these firms and, st- and cryptos when if it didn't happen these firms and cryptos would have just hit the dust and now what we're starting to see is these firms and stocks as well starting to crumble and hit the dust in my opinion 
So as reported by Zai Crypto, the seasonal trader thinks an 80% price drop for the fourth time since 2011 isn't out of the question. Similarly, in a tweet, the trader also highlighted that Ethereum is forming a descending triangle pattern that could see the asset break lower. Crypto firms are downsizing and Bitcoin miners are selling. So as the market correction continues to deal with the losses and brace for the crypto winter, crypto firms have had to cut down on the staff. Gemini and Coinbase are among the big names that announced plans to downsize in the face of a turbulent economic climate. Similarly, Bitcoin miners with a reputation for holding a majority of their mined Bitcoin are being forced to sell, adding the bearish pressures in the market, consequently mined Bitcoin flow to exchange has reached record January highs. However, it's not all doom and gloom for Bitcoin despite all of this. It is worth noting that Bitcoin ETFs have continued to see inflows in the last couple of weeks with inflows last week totaling 129 million a sign that investors still see some upside for the nascent market moreover investment bank jp morgan believes that bitcoin is currently undervalued with crypto markets in general having more room for an upswing which is what i believe are we still going to go down yes because it's all um depending on this war with putin at the moment and what's going on there so this is something that was really sad to see it's really annoying um, the SEC are continuing this 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 witch hunt in crypto. So, as we can see, here, SEC rejects grayscale spot Bitcoin ETF application. Um, grayscale also own CoinDesk, and we're reading this on CoinDesk. So let's take it with a pinch of salt. So grayscale investments application to convert its 13.5 billion grayscale Bitcoin trust GBTC into a spot based Bitcoin exchange traded fund was denied by the Security and Exchange Commission on Wednesday, Wednesday despite the company's extensive efforts to win approval. Grayscale is owned by a digital currency group, which is also the parent company of Coindesk. The SEC stated in its decision that the application failed to answer the SEC's questions about preventing market manipulation as well as other concerns. Now, that's funny that they're so bothered about that, but they wasn't bothered about the Fed pumping billions into the market. There was in and that, that, that straight there is market manipulation. Uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, they, 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 they are literally picking winners and losers. And America or like the SEC is setting them up to be so far behind everybody else in the crypto curve that they're going to struggle to keep up and they're going to struggle to, to, to get back up. Th these problems are not happening all, all over the world. You know, they're only really happening to America. And we have to think, why is that? Because America is normally first when it comes to everything. So the SEC stated in its decision that the application failed to answer the SEC's questions about preventing market manipulation as well as other concerns. The decision joined the SEC's rejection on Wednesday of Bitwise's application for approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF, which is compromised of Bitcoin or assets related to the to Bitcoin's price. Like Bitwise, Grayscale initially filed its application in October, but the decision was delayed multiple times. The SEC requested additional information and comment from the public. The final deadline for the SEC to render a decision on grayscale application was the 6th of July. Proponents for a spot Bitcoin ETF approval have, uh, argue, have argued that the product would offer a low cost and easily accessible way for individuals and institutions to invest in Bitcoin. Optimism about an approval began to grow following the approval of several Bitcoin futures based ETF last fall and then that two more future ETF approvals earlier this year based on the Security Exchange Act of 1934, the same act under which spot Bitcoin ETFs have been filed. So for its part, Grayscale have argued forcefully that, it's in, that it is inconsistent to approve an ETF based on Bitcoin futures, but not allow one based on the underlying asset. I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty fair. Some of its efforts have included market into urge members of the public to voice their opinion to the SEC, a main meeting with the SEC and strengthen of its legal team with the addition of Donald B. Verrill Jr., who previously served as Solicitor General in the Obama administration. The denial comes as a blow, not only to Grayscale, but for the broader crypto industry as a long campaign in the hopes of, for proving the SEC the product contained sufficient investor protections. Now, the problem with this is that I, th I think this all hinges on Ripple. This all hinges on can Ripple 
win against the SEC in terms of Gary, in terms of um, Brad Garn in house and the XRP lawsuit. Can they win? If Ripple and everyone can win um, against them, then we're going to start seeing a hell of a lot more innovation in the US and it's going to be good for the crypto industry. If we don't, then it's going to be bad. And I think they're going to try and keep crypto down and keep it and, and try and, and try and treat it like a bad employee and manage it out, to be very honest with you. Um, so this now comes as a blow, not only to Grayscale, but for the broader crypto industry after a long campaign in the hopes of providing the SEC and the product contains sufficient investor protection. A few analysts and observers were anticipating an approval. However, noting the SEC chair, Gary Gensler, has been consistent in wanting to see some more oversight of crypto exchanges before approving a spot Bitcoin ETF. He is the oversight. Investors in crypto observers will now turn their focus to what Grayscale can and will do now to win an approval for a conversation. CEO Michael Sonnenshine said on June 27th, the company will be preparing for all possible post ruling scenario and on the same date grayscale said it would be working with the market makers jane street and virtue finance to help convert gbtc into an etf if its application was approved gbtc was trading at an approximate 29 percent discount to the asset value ahead of the denial down from 34 percent a prior week so Bargain snappers, but here we are. But in the UK, we're not in the UK, so in Europe, um, this is Amsterdam. We've got a new spot Bitcoin ETF launches at Euro next Amsterdam exchange. So it's pretty sad, like that America's really like stifling innovation. And we're going to get into this, and it's good news. It's good news, crypto. It's not all doom and gloom today, guys. So, major Dutch stock exchange, and this is um, from Coin Telegraph. So major Dutch stock exchange Euronext Amsterdam, a part of the pan-European marketplace, Euronext, is, deb is debuting its first Bitcoin exchange tr traded fund. Try to say that with a mouthful. Jacobi Asset Management, a London digital-based asset management platform, is preparing to launch its Jacobi Bitcoin ETF on Euronext Amsterdam next month. The firm announced on Thursday, the spot Bitcoin ETF will start trading on the Euronext Amsterdam exchange under the ticker Bitcoin, well, Bcoin, sorry. The Jacobi Bitcoin ETF is positioned as the first spot Bitcoin ETF launched in Europe. Jacobi founder and CEO Jamie Kershid told Cointelegraph, our product is the first spot or physical back Bitcoin fund and the fund is not allowed to lend, stake or leverage any of the assets it owns. For the first time in Europe, investors buying an exchange changed Bitcoin product will own the units that own the Bitcoin Kershid said, there are other exchange traded products in Europe, but no other spot BTC ETF, he said. A spokesperson for Euronext confirmed the Bitcoin will be the first spot Bitcoin ETF ever listed on Euronext. This will be the first Bitcoin ETF on Euronext or the first fund directly investing in Bitcoin. All of the currently existing products on our segment are exchange traded notes or legally structured as debt instruments, he said. In a statement, while the ETF would arrive in July, Euronext did not provide a specific date for the launch. As previously reported, Jacoby received approval from the Guernsey Financial Service Commission to launch the Bitcoin ETF in October 21. Custodial services for the Jacoby Bitcoin ETF will be provided by Fidelity's crypto arm Fidelity Digi Digital Assets, while Flow Traders and DRW would serve as market makers to facilitate trading. Institutional and professional investors in Europe will be able to have access to the ETF for a 1.5% annual management fee, the announcement notes. Former investment banker at Goldman Sachs, Kershid, believes that the new Bitcoin ETF launch will help bring more stability to the crypto market and made a massive sell-off, he said. So it sounds like really good news. I mean, you can um, continue to read on with that one yourself if you wish. That's it, it's, it's, it's good news that we're still seeing this innovation in Europe and it's just really upsetting that we can't really get it in america in fact we'll carry on because it's such good news so jacob's bitcoin etf 
launch in the Netherlands is a significant milestone in the global spot crypto ETF market as Amsterdam is associated with Europe's top share trading venue, reportedly outstripping London in 2021. So it's previously reported Canada was one of the first countries in the world to debut a spot a spot Bitcoin ETF with the launch of the Purpose Bitcoin ETF in February 2021. Australia debuted its first crypto ETFs in mid-May 2022. So there we go. You know, we, 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 they are coming. They are coming. It might be up for Americans to try to find other ways they can maybe invest outside. Um, you know, it's 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 just it's just a look at what what's happening at the moment. But you know, that's with the crypto news uh, for today. So yep, stop boy D blockchain finance and value. Like and subscribe and peace.